everyone. Today we are going to be talking about first strike rounds, as in what are they? What do they do? Uh, they have been around for a really long time, but I constantly meet people that have just never heard of them or are not familiar with them, so we figured we'd do a little vid for those people. Uh, and I'm going to start off with like what is the same with a first strike round versus just a regular paintball? Well, they still have paint in them. The front little half right here, the little rounded half, that still has paint in it. Uh, and then after that, pretty much everything is different. Um, they're not made of the same material, they are actually made of plastic. So they are much, much tougher, they don't dimple, they don't, um, they don't deform, they keep their shape pretty much no matter what. Uh, and they can't be used in a hopper or a loader, they have to be in a magazine. That's basically just because they have this shape. Um, so obviously if you just pour them into a loader, that's not going to work, they're all going to go in all willy-nilly, all weird. Um, so they do have to be used in a magazine. So, and it has to be a magazine that's actually designed for that. Essentially, it's got to have this like D-shaped hole as opposed to just a round one. Uh, so they're not compatible with even every magazine out there. There are some mag-fed paintball markers that can't use first strikes, but the majority of them can. And most of them actually at this point can use first strikes. So what is the benefit of using something like this? Basically, Accuracy and range, those are the main ones. Those are the really, really big benefits. Uh, in terms of range, if you're shooting the same velocity with a regular paintball and a first strike, you're gonna get almost double the range on the first strike. Maybe not quite double, but it's gonna be like a significant improvement. And in terms of accuracy, they're way more accurate. There's, there's a lot of weird numbers thrown out around there about how accurate they are, but that really comes down to like what other brand of paintball you're comparing them to. Uh, it also comes down to like what barrel you're using, what marker you're using, blah, 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 blah. But the fact of the matter is, is they are crazy accurate. They will, if you've got a good setup for it, they are going to go pretty much exactly where you tell them. Uh, the reason they do this is because they have these little fins on the back. Now this fin, this back part is actually hollow. There's nothing in here. The paint is all stored in the front. And as you can see, these little fins are angled. So that's going to give it a bit of a spin while it's in the air. Um, that spin essentially stabilizes it in flight, so if you're familiar with paintballs where after a certain distance they kind of just start going whatever direction they want, that is largely due to the fact that they are a sphere filled with liquid, so at a certain point they just kind of veer off in whatever direction. The first strike is way, way, way more stable, so it's going to stay fairly straight pretty much in its entire trajectory. Uh, because of this, you do benefit really greatly by having a rifled barrel. It's not necessary, you can get away with not using a rifled barrel, but for sure you're going to see better performance with a rifled barrel. Um, and you also are going to benefit from using things like, like more consistent markers. Um, what I mean by that is like if you're using an inconsistent marker where you get every shot like kind of a swing over the chronograph, you're going to get a different amount of air each time. So the first strikes are going to be going on a different trajectory each time. The more consistent the marker, uh, the more similar the shot per shot chrono speed is, and then that's when you can really like dial these in. Uh, they are generally touted as like sniper paintballs, but honestly, even if you're not sniping, there's a lot of great benefits to using these things. They are, like I said, they go further, they go straighter, they're very, very accurate, but there's also just a lot of little quality of life stuff that's really nice about the, uh, using first strikes. For one, they do not care about water. You can, like, they're made of plastic. You can get them wet. You can be playing in the rain. They can, you can drop a mag in a puddle and pick it up and just, and they are fine. They do not care. It's not like regular paintballs that get all soft and deformed and whatever. Um, so that's really nice. You can also keep them under tension pretty much indefinitely. And what I mean by that is, um, so if you load up a magazine with regular paintballs, you really don't want to engage the follower in that magazine because that, like, if you do, then the paintballs are going to be under tension and eventually they could dimple. Um, the downside of this, of not engaging the follower, is if you actually shake the magazine, it will rattle. There will, there will be sound because there's loose paintballs just kind of rattling around in there. Uh, if you're using first strikes, you can engage the follower and there's no downside to it. So it means that they're going to they're gonna be held ten, like in tension. So if you shake that magazine, it's not going to make any noise. Um, and it just means you're going to be slightly sneakier because if you're carrying like six plus mags and they all have like loose paint in them and you're running or sneaking or doing whatever, you're going to have this little rattle going on the whole time. With first strikes, you don't have to deal with that. You can engage all your mags. They're not going to rattle. They're not going to dimple. Nothing bad's going to happen to them. So, you know, it's pretty nice. 
Um, now, a couple things to keep in mind if you are interested in using first strikes, they are not allowed everywhere. There's not, not every field is going to let you use these things. And even the fields that do allow them don't necessarily allow them all the time. Um, so there may be fields out there that allow them for certain events, but not others. There may be fields out there that just don't allow them at all. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen an indoor field allow first strikes, but to be honest with an indoor field, most of the time they're not really necessary just because indoor fields tend to be a lot smaller. Um, but you know, it, that's neither here nor there. And there is one other thing I should mention because this is kind of a, I don't want to call it a myth, but it's kind of a myth that's been just around as long as first strikes have been around. And this is the general perception that first strikes hurt more than a regular paintball. Depending on how you slice it, that may or may not be true. And what I mean by this is, is that if, if you get shot by a first strike from 10 feet away, from basically point blank range, that is going to hurt essentially the same as a paintball would from the same distance. Essentially, if, if you're shooting a paintball in a first strike at the same velocity and it's point blank, they're going to feel the same. You're not really going to notice much of a difference. If anything, the first strike might hurt less because it actually weighs less than a regular paintball. Not by much, but by enough. Uh, it's when you're start, starting to take those really long distance shots that it may feel like it hurts more because the first strike kind of hangs on to its velocity way, way better. Um, with a regular paintball, as soon as that thing leaves the barrel, it's slowing down pretty significantly. So if you get shot from maybe 50 feet away, it's going a lot slower than it when it was it had just left the barrel. The first strike, not so much. The first strike's going to hang on to its velocity much, much better. So if you get shot from 50 feet away with the first strike, it does sort of feel like you, they, you were a lot closer to the shooter. So does it hurt more if you're far away, if you're farther away, sure. But it still doesn't hurt more than just a regular paintball. So if you can handle getting a point blank shot from a regular paintball, I promise you can handle a first strike. Now there is one other little caveat to that, which is the fact that of course the first strike is made of plastic. Its shell is made of plastic. And that's, this has like two sort of effects to it. One is that if you do get shot in bare skin with a first strike, there is a chance that some of those shards of plastic could cut you. It still happens with regular paintballs, even with regular paintball shells. It's just, you know, it's something to consider. You could get some shallow minor cuts from the actual shell itself. The other thing is bounces. First strikes are generally designed to be shot at 280 or above. If you're shooting them at any like lower velocity than that, then because of that really tough shell, they are much, much, much more likely to bounce. And anyone who's familiar with paintball knows that bounces hurt a lot more than breaks. So if you're playing at a place that allows first strikes, but they shoot them at like a lower velocity, like 250 to 260, yeah, they're gonna hurt a lot more because most of them are bouncing. Um, keep that in mind. There is a lot of like, like myths and rumors about first strikes just hurting so much. But like, I promise I've been using these things for years, years and years and years. And there's really not a real difference as long as you're shooting them at like 280 or above. Um, it's when you get to those lower velocities that you're starting to notice that they're just like bouncing all day and that's, you know, bounces suck. Um, so if you are looking to use some first strikes, if you are like, you want to try them out or something like that, I would recommend try to do it at a field that lets you shoot at 280. If you're shooting at lower than 280, I don't think it's really worth it in my opinion because, um, you're just gonna, they're all gonna bounce and that kind of sucks. Also, None of this is necessary, but it is nice to get a, a rifled barrel for first strikes. They are, they do really like rifled barrels. They work very well. And like, you know, don't be afraid to mess around with some optics. Maybe a scope, maybe a red dot, I don't know. Like really try and maximize that accuracy because you can do some pretty crazy stuff with them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty, much. there was a bit of a ramble, bit of a rant, but those are first strike rounds. So those of you guys that actually use these things, um, you know, what kind of setup do you use? Do you use them for sniping? Um, do you use them just as you would like a regular paintball? Um, do you have a specific setup just for first strikes? Do you have a marker that you use for both? Like, let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And thanks for watching.